Well, good morning. Uh, we're delighted to invite you as parents and as teachers and perhaps students to join us for a few minutes as we discuss matters of uh, SPEHA's transition to home learning. Uh, we're now just past three weeks of experience doing home learning and we've spent a lot of time together talking and working and trying to figure out really best practices for how to do this. And so here is uh, our HEADS team, uh, the team uh, of of leaders from five schools who gather at least once a week. Actually, lately it's been multiple times a week uh, with so many things for us to work through and figure out together. And we have a handful of issues that we are discussing together and we wanted to invite you in as though you were actually present in a room with all of us, listening to us explore some of the challenges that we face, educators around the world, and how we as a group of schools have been seeing wisdom about how best to, to make this transition so that our children are blessed, we accomplish our mission, we provide excellent education for as long as we need to in this, uh, in this difficult time. Uh, so I'm gonna invite everyone to introduce themselves. I'll start. Uh, my name is Matthew Mann. I'm the coordinator of Espeja Schools and also the head of school at Espeja Lippo Village. And any of you in, in any order, Hey, I'm Tim Heading. I'm the uh, Espaha Fort Village Academic Principal. My name, my name is Helen Schlippers. Uh, my name is Mark Tyson. I'm the head of school at uh, Espaha Kamang Village. Hi, I'm Helen Schlepper, and I'm the academic principal at Espaha Lipo Chikadang. Hello, my name is Brett Bonema. I am uh, serving as the academic principal at Espaha Central City. Hi, I'm Eileen, and um, I'm the school system coordinator working together with uh, Matthew Mann in Espeha Karawati. And I'm Greg Thompson. I'm on the LV campus working with the heads and with the operations team on strategic initiatives. So the past month, uh, more than a month now, has been uh, extraordinarily transformative for educators and students all over the world. I'm interested in you on your campuses and in your particular circumstances. What are you seeing? How would you describe this experience for you? I think this past month um, has been a difficult time, challenging time. It's a season of major change. Um, all of our routines have come upside down. Um, it's a, it's, there's, this is a time of uncertainty. Um, but I'm thankful that we can um, turn to our God who is very certain and that is very sovereign and we can trust in him. Um, however, I, I want to just share like it's, it's, there's a lot of emotions for everyone. I think for they've had to transition to online learning, which, which has been a challenge. I think for parents, it's been a huge challenge as well as now their kids are at home and they're managing um, their online studies. And even for students, a lot of them are, you know, they, they have a lot of fears, they have a lot of anxiety, their normal routine has completely changed. And so it's, it's a lot of emotions for everyone. And we acknowledge that um, for, for teachers, it's been a lot of change and for parents. Um, Parents, you have done an extraordinary job and we want to thank you um, for all your support, your help, your feedback. I think especially for junior school, um, I have two junior school um, kids myself. And although they're in fourth and fifth grade and they can open up their emails and you know they do ask questions and I can, I can help them. I, I'm thinking of the kindy parents and the younger grades where you literally have to open up the email and read all the instructions and set up the Zoom. So to those parents, thank you so much. We acknowledge um, how difficult and challenging it's been for you, but we are grateful, just so incredib incredibly grateful for your partnership and for your help. And I hope you know that we um, are praying for parents, we're praying for teachers, we're praying for students um, in these times of uncertainty but we know that we have a faithful God who's, who's gonna help us through this, but we acknowledge that it is, it is a difficult and challenging time. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Helen. Anyone else? Well, I think I've just been really proud of the way teachers have stepped up as they've needed to right across all the Espaha schools. Uh, it's been great to see particular teachers take on aspects of leadership because they've had 
um, past experience in particular things or just have knowledge of particular online programs or um, just general teaching experience that has been really helpful to be able to share with the other teachers. So just the collaboration has been great to see and the learning amongst the teachers and just the willingness to learn and uh, improve as, as they, they grow. And this has been really pretty great and encouraging to see. Right. I would say that I've been surprised because I thought that we would be sooner entering a stage where things were simpler. Uh, and yet I found that the complexity has been just shocking to me, just how much there is for a school to manage with all of this. When I'm at home during the day, some, when my kids are studying, when my wife is trying to manage food and children and kids having a difficult time over here and technology and this homework and kids need to get exercise and not spend their all day. Like, it, there's just so much more as you were saying, Helen, especially I think for, for parents, for, the, for, for, for parents who are at home and especially the parents who are trying to work at the same time as manage their kids at home. So just very, very complex, nothing that almost anyone has been prepared for in any, with any experience in, in, in anything like this. I think for those of us on the other side of the globe, it's been an interesting uh, transition as well, trying to uh, stay in our Jakarta time zone even though we're 11, 12 or, or more hours apart. Right. I think the other thing, just observing uh, some of the postings of how um, teachers and students have stayed connected in spite of the, the distance, uh, that's just a real testimony to the relationships uh, that our teachers have built with students and the desire to maintain those and to support students in a real time of uncertainty as well. For sure. Well, one of the things that I think is essential for us as leaders is that we make sure that we stay true to what's most important for us. It would be easy for us to get distracted by things like technology and things that are important but not fundamentally important. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts about how about what matters most to us in this season and, and what we are doing to make sure that we stay true to that. Eileen, can you start to share, sharing with us your thoughts about that? Okay. Well, as we all know that this school is founded with a very clear vision 26 years ago, 27 years ago. It's um, the vision uh, throughout the school is true knowledge, faith in Christ, and godly character. Uh, it's something that we uh, we do in uh, all, uh, all aspects of uh, the school uh, and in our day-to-day classroom management and uh, basically throughout the school. Now the challenge is how do we do it uh, in this season? Because I don't think there's an on and off time where we do or we don't. In regular time or in challenging time, uh, we have to do it. In fact, I see this as a big opportunity. It's really an opportunity to really carry this out in a different level from a di different aspect. Something that we don't ask and we don't pray uh, about, but when it comes, I think we all have to really think out of, out of the box and make use of this COVID-19 season uh, to bring students closer to him, to bring students to really experience uh, what they've been learning in classroom. Uh, it's not about textbook. Bible is not about textbook. Bible is about how do they, uh, you know, implement this. And this is the, I think this is, this can be the best season if we make the best use of it. And I think for parents as well, this is an opportunity to, I know you are all, these parents are all busy, but this is an opportunity for the children to see how to respond to crisis. Because in their life, I believe that we don't pray for it, but I believe that crisis will come in different uh, form, different uh, time. And uh, it's a life learning experience as a believer, how do we, res we respond to it? So I think uh, through this COVID-19 season, uh, we can also be blessed in a different way. What are some of the practical things happening at any of your campuses that have to do with, with the continued promotion of our, of, of our vision and keeping the mission central? What are you seeing already that your teachers are doing? I think one, one area is continuing on with the devotions and I think that trying to start the day with that. Um, so connecting with the students through Zoom, 
Um, so it's, it you know, serves the purpose of building, continuing that building of relationships as well. Um, but just helping the students to, to focus on Christ first and foremost and start their day that way and just keep that going, that sense of prayerfulness and trusting in him right through the day, regarding whether it's to do with home learning or um, home situations, friends, school, just keeping Christ front and centre. I think it's been great to see that continuing, in a, certainly in a different format and a different way, but still going forward with that. We had a, a great experience last week where our student prayer group uh, organized an event and invited teachers and staff to it. We had, I don't know, 150 people or so join in in a Zoom call that they led. Uh, we broke out into Zoom rooms for prayer, uh, each one led by a student. Um, and so I was just really heartened by, by the fact that this was, well, a student led and that it was prayerful at a time when we know that our schools need prayer. So I would say we're still at uh, something of an early stage as a group at figuring out how to make this a settled part. Doing, doing chapel, for example, online for hundreds of students and teachers, it, it, it is a difficult thing. Um, you know, do we do it recorded or do we do it live? And when do we do it so that people can join in? We have practical things to work through, but, uh, but, but certainly that is what we're aiming to preserve as our highest purpose the encouragement of faith in our children uh, that they would see Jesus and through this season we wouldn't lose the opportunity to help them with that.